North Warmba is on the edge of Odium in Hampshire. You go into the High Street of North Warmba and you make a right into Tunnel Lane. It's signposted, so you should be able to find that one okay. Now when you go down here, you need to go fairly slowly. It might look like I'm going fast, but I'm not. It's just the camera, because there are walkers. At the end, there is a canal and a drawbridge. A little parking spot there for you. And to the left of the drawbridge is the sign there, footpath. Now, if you go in the afternoon, this is particularly good if the sun's out because you're walking into the sun. So you can see there the footpath going across that field, right across to the other side. And obviously it differs here as the seasons change what the crops are like. Nice, easy flat walking. When you get to the other side of the field, you can walk along the hedge side just in front of me there but there's also a little gap now if you go through this gap there will be a stile there there always is a stile there and there's paddocks for horses either side so you go over the stile taking great care not to fall and you're going to follow those railings and the footpath sign that's put up there to the opposite side of the field When you get right to the opposite end of this field, you've got to follow this post and rail along there, there's another stile. Now then, this is always pretty muddy except in the height of summer because of the horses there. Over that stile and go towards the houses in the distance. It's a very narrow field, this one, and occasionally there are horses in there. Who knows? It's just a footpath going through and it picks up North Warmbra High Street. Before you go through that, you go through a little sliding stile there, down a narrow, alleyway which is a sort of walkway between the houses there and at the time I was making this film it comes out onto the high street. Now as I'm standing there going to make a right up the high street you're then leaving North Warmborough. Just looking back at it and I'm going up the hill here when I get to the top of the hill there's a road on the left to Odium and over there is the street the high street from North Warmborough. I've walked out of North Warmborough about half a mile and I'm heading up towards Greywall, Upton Grey, not Odium. I go to the top of that hill where that car is. On the right, just to give you a guide there, you're going to be walking past another road, which also goes down and meets the canal there. So you're going to be walking past Deptford Lane. You don't, on this route, this particular walk I've done, you don't actually go down Deptford Lane. Here you will see the sign Deptford Lane, we go towards Greywell. And as you can see the finger sign, Odium is behind me. I'm going to be walking left, going towards Upton Grey. Walk to the top of this hill, about where my wife is standing. There is a footpath to the left. That's a different route, but this is to make a circular route for you. And on the right, when you get past that finger sign there, almost opposite is a gap. Now this view is definitely worth doing in an afternoon. You won't be disappointed with a view like this. It is stupendously panoramic and a prime example of, well, great Hampshire countryside. As yet, not a housing estate. Fabulous view. And you're looking sort of west to southwest there across big fields. No, they can grow anything here. Each time the crop is going to be different, but it really is a great view and a, a nice walk down the footpath, straight down across the hill, and a lot of flint here, very historic area. You're gonna see quite a bit of huge chunks of flint, especially if you go in the autumn. Now look at that view, it goes for miles and miles and miles. Now there's a particularly large lump of flint there. As you can see, it's actually been cleaved off there, presumably by the plough when it goes through there. If, you li if you're into collecting flint, you want to come here in the autumn after they ploughed everything up, early winter. Now there's a footpath, easily designated when there's a crop growing there because you can see it walks right over towards the woods. When you get to the bottom of the, of the field there, just keep going straight towards the hedge and you'll see a gate. Now there is the farm crossing gate I call that one some people call them kissing gates I think it's called a crossing gate it's marked livestock grazing now they might or might not be here 
to the right, I can go back towards the canal. If I wanted to go, it's a footpath to the right. If I wanted to go straight across there, there's also a footpath. Always remember to close the gates. Now I'm going to be going left there. I'm going to be turning left through that gate. You can go straight across, across the river, but I want to pick the river up further along. So through the gate, keeping the hedge on your left. And in the afternoon, as I say, you're pretty well walking towards the sunshine. We hope, or rain, depending on the British weather. You're actually on Greywell Moors. And this is a, a designated area. It's really good for wildlife if you go early in the morning or late in the evening. It's a marshland area, and you can read all up on it because they put these bulletin boards there. Um, you know, give you a bit of an information there, a little bit of information will obviously give you an idea of what area you are where you're walking. You, you've walked possibly half a mile along and you will come to another one. There's the field on the left, that's the one we walked across. You're going to be come to another stile, you'll then be leaving Greywell Moors. There's a sign, so that's going to be behind me. Another gate, this one's a wooden gate at the time of filming. Open and bearing in mind there's livestock signs there. Now whether there be livestock in there I don't know but as with all things at the countryside, best to keep gates closed. Follow this footpath and it goes under, you'll see sort of southwest to the, is over to the right because you can tell by the way these trees have been bent. There's a secondary path there, ignore that. Keep on the main path, the agricultural field is on your left and the wood curves right over the top of your head. So in the springtime this can be really good and quite pretty. In fact, you can notice just how much ivy there is on these trees here and that's another another uh, little bee I have in my bonnet about how much ivy is growing now. Now when you get to the end of this one, it goes left and right. A footpath does go left, there's two big steel girder stakes in there on the right. You can go up the left, but you'll be walking away from the circular route. I would turn right, I've come down that bridle way, that's what I've walked down with the curved trees, then there's a sign for the footpath. Go down the footpath, now you're getting into a fairly boggy sort of area, even in the summer it can be quite uh, muddy there. Um, follow your way around and you're going to come up to a lake. Now these clumps, you can see these tussocks on the left, I've read up that they can be actually 50 years old. So a very historic area this, and this lake is unbelievably clear. There's the underwater camera. How clear is that? It looks like the Bahamas, it looks like the Caribbean. Hard to believe, it's just outside Odium in Hampshire, just up from North Warmba. And as you can see, I'm there in the middle of winter and it's tap water clear. But being a watery sort of area where the springs rise, the footpath is also muddy. Wonderful setting, but in fact, I'd never really see a lot of bird life there. So whether that water doesn't hold a lot of insects or plant life, I don't know for them. But there you can see these unusual tussocks. And I say, they can be up to 50 years old, these weird looking things. So that's quite something that's quite interesting, I find anyway, of walking past something that's nearly as old as I am. So you follow the footpath along, you've got the lake on your left, and you come up against the mill here. A really, really old mill. You're going to pass just slightly to the right of that mill. There's an old sluice, you can see the old wood timber sluice there, and just look at the tap water clarity of the water running through into the little river there. So the mill could be backed up by closing that sluice, and through that slatted gateway if you like you can see the original wood wheel which is very very unusual and it's pretty large so this is obviously a milling area I would guess if I put the camera through there you can see that is probably the actual original mill wheel that they use maybe the spokes are missing there I can see the holes in the top but it's nice to see something well I won't say it's preserved it doesn't look as preserved as I would have thought, but you can see it was a, a working unit. So come back out and just opposite you, you'll see Greywell fly fishing. That's where they're 
do the trout fishing there. Mill is on my left, you see the brick wall there. You're gonna follow the main footpath and the bottom end of the mill is here. So you can see the stream, it's come underneath the mill, come out the other side, and it now runs down to meet up with the main river. About 20, 30 yards up, you'll see the footpath sign, Countryside Services by Hampshire County Council. Follow that footpath down, and you'll be going all the way down with the river on your right. They've got a nice boardwalk there. I mean, years ago when I was younger, they never used to have a boardwalk and it's very, very muddy because the river was that close to uh, the edge you were walking. And the boardwalk makes it a really interesting place. It, it's pretty good, it's pretty easy to walk there. And of course you've got all the, um, all the, all the vegetation to look at in the springtime, especially this is a really nice walk. Now a lot of this over the years I've noticed the last year or so have been cleared. Now if you get to the end of the ball walk, you go back on the track again, you will eventually come into the graveyard. I suppose you could call it the dead centre of the place. There's the church. Nice little church there to walk. Keeping the church on your right. Say in the winter it's easy to follow because you're going to see the footpath there. And the entrance of the church is on the opposite side to which you've walked and you're going to be walking across those fields to the houses in the distance through another style area or a gate there's the door now i do wonder on those hinges is there a link to the sea because they look very much like anchors to me i don't know myself but with the church on your background behind you you can walk right up into the little village there footpath but i'm going to be walking straight across you can just see the wear mark to the houses, little brown tread marks, right to the other side. It's really two fields, but they could, they could, of course, make it one field. So if you imagine you're walking through this little hinge wooden gate, you're going to be walking right to the far side there, keeping the woodland on your right, walking in a straight line. And when you get to the end of that, you'll see a footpath sign and another style which takes you down through an alleyway between some properties. When you come out, you're coming out on a main road. You can turn right or you can turn left. I turn left because I'm making this a circular walk for you. You walk up the road, taking care to watch out for traffic. Not particularly busy, but always be aware when you're walking on the road. In between houses, you're in a, a mature residential area, I'm gonna call it. There is a pub up on the left there if, if you do want to break and go and have a meal. Um, can't think of the name, but I think it's Fox and Goose, I'm not sure. On the right, just before you get to that T-junction, is a footpath. Take this footpath, and it's quite narrow, it's going to go to the top end of the Basingstoke Canal. Um, now up here it's called the Grey World Tunnel, and you can easily see it by going down this, nar uh, this narrow footpath with a high hedge over a panel fence. And when you get to the end, it's recently been cleared, this is in 2016, early 2016. You can see that uh, You've got an open area over a bridge, and there is the canal, in fact, the Basingstoke Canal, relatively near its source. This is a sort of a nice conservation area, and extremely clear here. The clarity of the water, again, is very, very clear. You might or might not be able to see it looking down through there, and that tunnel, although it's small, used to uh, be a, a work-through place for boats, and it's now got bats in there, protected, protected species of bats down inside there. Can't tell you how many's in there. You'd have to contact the bat conservation people. But the Grey World Tunnel is famous for its uh, bats in there. And a scenic, nice piece of brickwork there as well. So you've come over the bridge, you've turned right, then you, it is totally in it proof. There's just some sort of clarity you can see of the actual canal. And you can still see bits of flint there as well. If you look, you can see the flint on the bottom of the canal. Further down where they have the boat activity, you won't get this because the boat's obviously churned it all up. But if you follow the towpath along, it's very scenic. I mean, this is early 2016. The weed is still growing. There's a lot of work being done over the far side. This is a turning area here. 
uh, for the big um, long boats to turn around in. And if you keep following that down, there's a stream that runs underneath it. This comes through the stream you've been uh, following comes underneath, actually goes underneath the canal from the other side of the canal, which seems weird, but it goes underneath the canal. And there's a sign that strikes the fear into most fishermen's hearts. No fishing. Now, a couple of hundred yards on from there, you have Odium Castle. When I was a kid, it was called King John's Castle. And now it looks like it's been renamed Odium Castle. It was there, I think it was a, a hunting lodge or something for King John, but it's always been known by me and locals as King John Castle. Not much of a castle left there now, but it is a very historic area. You might also note that a lot of the building there was done with that very same flint. I'm gonna call it cemented in there, but I'm assuming it's not cement, but you can see between 1207 and 1214, the King John had the castle built here. And then I believe Odium was attacked in 1216 by Le French. But you can see, if you look carefully, loads and loads of flint glued in there, I would say, in fact, some of it falls out, that's why they've got the canopy there. You walk down the footpath here, keep going along the canal towpath, and you come back to the bridge. You can see the drawbridge there where the boats come through, and I happen to be parked over on the other side, but you can park just down on the right, and that is the circular route done. Hope you've enjoyed it. Give it a try, and thanks for watching the Totally Awesome Outdoor Show Walking Section. <laughs>